Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Team Excellence Call. This is Lynn Gardner. I'm calling in from Virginia this morning, and yeah, I hope it, this day finds you well. We got a little misty rain going on, and we were talking about. I feel a little guilty when I complain about the rain. It has a purpose, obviously, but poor folks out in California are devastated without you know, having rain. So, you know, I'm just going to pray some rain your way. Um, I was supposed to make this call this morning from Pennsylvania. I was going to be traveling up to see some of my sisters and. We all have birthdays, believe it or not, within just a couple of weeks of each other. So the 81-year-old, the oldest in our family, suggested that we have a, a sister slumber party. Can you even imagine an 81-year-old suggesting a, a sister slumber party? But unfortunately, she had to trade her PJs in for a hospital gown, and she's in the hospital. We're, we're just trying to mend her back to health. And for those of you that have reached out to offer your prayers for my sister, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Don't quit praying. I think she's going to be fine, but we always appreciate your prayers. Before I get into the meat of the call, I do want to say something about um, our business this time of year. You know, we're coming up onto the holidays, and, and I just want to encourage you to don't fool yourself into thinking that the whole world's going to shut down and, and people aren't going to make decisions and there's no need to even try because everybody's busy and everybody's spending money because nothing could be farther from the truth. You know, we have, uh, in Agic, year after year after year has, you know, indicated that December is the biggest month of our year. So clearly people are making decisions, and, you know, it's not a time to stop. If you need to, you know, work this as your business, and if you need the income from your business, you certainly don't want to fool yourself in thinking everybody else has stopped because that's not the case. And there's a lot of reasons people look, I guess, at this time of year, and it's not just that, you know, people are buying uh, our technology or any one of our products as gifts, although plenty of people are. I'm certainly hearing from them. But it's also they might have been stalling on that decision, and they, they want to go ahead and take advantage of the tax deduction. It's also that as we close out the year, I know I can't be the only person. I come into the end of the year, and I start looking back saying, good grief, where did the year go, and how's the next year going to be different for me? So they're kind of in a different mindset. It's actually a very good time of year to be talking to them. So don't you know, don't fool yourself and, and – and, you know, I second to God, my family comes, you know, and, and we're very close. The holidays are very important to me, but I also need to make a living. So if you want to just, you know, for your own reasons to kind of go idle until next year and enjoy the holidays and all that, and you don't need to, you know, make a, make the living, then that's your prerogative. But if you're still, um, you know, focused on your business, don't let go at this time of the year. It's very important. You know, I tell you guys that I spent 18 years in real estate and, the biggest deal I ever wrote, the biggest contract of my entire career, in fact, one that would make most people salivate over, was for $20 million, and it was ratified on New Year's Eve at 9 o'clock at night. So you know, I know I have no life, but I also don't shut down. You know, when things need to happen, they need to happen. So stay in, stay in the game, guys, because it's going to be a very, very busy, very productive time of year if you want to if you want to continue on. You know, as we face the holidays, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, and I haven't cleared this with Omar, but I'm certainly assuming I'm not going to be on this call. So I wanted to bring forth a message today of of gratitude and, and thankfulness, you know, in, in preparation for that holiday for you. And we hear a lot about having an attitude of gratitude in our business. It's important to have, you know, the right attitude, the winning attitude, the successful attitude, you know. But I, I kind of want to look at things a little bit differently, as usual, I guess. You know, I am a woman of faith, and you know that. I tell you, I, I can't I can't hide. I won't hide my faith. It's just who I am. And as I go through life, every once in a while, I'll run into people that will say, you know, what is the matter with you people that you could possibly believe in a God that lets bad stuff happen? Well, you know, how can you be thankful for these bad things? We're not thankful, you know, for the bad stuff but we believe in the ultimate purpose. And there's a purpose in everything that we go through in life. It's easy to give thanks for the good things. I mean, that's a piece of cake. Most people can do that in a, in a heartbeat. And as we gather around the table, most of us will celebrate Thanksgiving together. You know, Thanksgiving, the origin of Thanksgiving, you know, comes from a, a spiritual basis where it was, you know, the pilgrims were giving thanks to the God that provided the harvest. You know, it's easy to, to look at those tangible things, and it's easy to sit around the Thanksgiving table you know, with a feast before us, more food than anybody could ever think about. I mean, there may be a football game going on. It's easy, you know, to give thanks on that day. And a lot of us will actually go around the table and, and pause for a second and ask each one there, you know, what are you thankful for? And that's a good thing. We, My family does that as well. Some people will go the extra mile and they'll, you know, they'll have a poster board or something where they want to, you know, pretty much memory stamp. What was the, what were we thankful for that Thanksgiving? Those are all really good things. But, you know, for me, a lot of the joy comes in the not-so-good things. You know, and so I want to point out a couple to you today. Maybe it will get you thinking a little bit differently. I'm not thankful 
for the poverty I knew in my life as a child. I'm not thankful for that roller coaster. I'm not thankful that we didn't know what end was up and where what tomorrow would bring and where we were going to live and if we were going to live in a car and if we were going to eat. I'm not thankful for that stuff, but I will forever be grateful for what that instilled in me because, you see, it gave me a fighting spirit, a survival spirit. It put in me a work ethic because I was determined I was not going to live my life that way. It just put in me a fight because, you know what, I never in a million years would have imagined if you fast-forwarded the tape of my life, I would find myself with four kids, six and under, and my husband abandoned, here I was on my own with my children, I had to support these kids. And you know what? I don't believe for a second, had I not gone through that adversity, had I not been prepared for such a time as that, I don't think I would have had what it took to do what I had to do. And my children wanted for nothing. That's all because of what God did in me through that adversity. So, no, I'm not thankful for the poverty. I, no thanks. I don't, I don't even like thinking about it. But I'm very grateful Very, very grateful for the outcome that came. I'm not thankful, you know, for the brokenness in my family. I mean, who would would be thankful for that? And my kids grew up without a father. I didn't go out and find somebody and try to replace them. They didn't grow up without their father. I'm not thankful for a hole in their heart that I can't fill. You know, I'm not thankful for that. But I will forever be grateful for the fact that I had to force myself to look at my life, look at my errors, my bad judgment, look at the, 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 the sin in my life and the things that I did that brought me to that place of brokenness, you know. And it made me just determined that it wasn't going to be that way for my children. And so I didn't have this an example to, to live through. You know, I wasn't married. They weren't watching a marriage. I had to teach them about marriage. And so I taught my children, what, it, what does it look like for a woman to love her husband? What does it look like for a man to love his wife? What does that marriage really look like? And consequently, you know, I'm looking at now three of my four children are married, all three married people of faith. And when I see my daughters, the way they treat their husbands or my son, the way he treats his wife, I am overcome with emotion. And, you know, I don't think for a microsecond had I not gone through that brokenness and just said, I'm not going to let this be the norm. I, I didn't have an attitude of, oh, well, guys, live with it. It just didn't work. I had an attitude of it wasn't supposed to be that way. And it was because of my pain and because of my adversity that I could bring forth something that's just so, so beautiful. I'm not thankful that I lived, you know, most of my adult life, 30 years in pain. I'm not thankful that my day consisted of, you know, taking a cocktail of ibuprofen, Tylenol, aspirin. I'm not thankful that that led to a point of crisis where I'm in a neck brace and I'm eating Percocet like they're M&Ms. Who in the world would be thankful for that? But I will forever be grateful that that journey that got me that crisis point brought me where I am today and I'm here with you. It changed my life. You know, I, I'm grateful that I don't have the pain. And I have to tell you, I'm a hard-headed woman. And, and had I been introduced to what we have when I was in manageable pain mode, I would still be making bad jokes about the miracle water. I never would have even, you know, had that introduced into my life, okay? So I'm very grateful that I got to that point. I'm not thankful for that pain and agony of 30 years. I'm also thankful that I can say with certainty as I deal with people in our business, people that are living with pain, I can say, I know what you're feeling, and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if I didn't have that testimony, I may not have had, I may not have as much power in my own business as I have. So I'm very grateful for where that took me. I'm not thankful for the failures in my business. I'm a businesswoman. I don't like it when I fail, okay? But more than that, I believe in what we have. And, you know, it, it's very similar in my heart uh, as my, my faith is. I know what I have, and I know that I can help you. And so it's not just that, that I've lost a deal, but I really, I, I'm hurt that I wasn't able to convey the value of what I have because I know they need it. And so that forces me to stop and to look and say, what could I have done differently, if anything? What could I have said? Could I have introduced, uh, you know, a longer trial period? Could I, you know, what could I have done that could have brought them to a belief level that I want them to have? And you know what? That brings, that makes me into a better uh, business person, a better leader for our business, actually, because those failures always lead to victory. If we can just stop, we don't stop and say, well, that idiot didn't listen to me or that idiot bought an a, a, a inferior technology. That shouldn't be the heart of any of us. We should really be looking at saying, oh, wow, you know, did I drop the ball? How could I have made that different? Because I believe so passionately that they need what I have. So I'm very grateful for those failures that lead me to be better 
in the business that that we're in. You know, I'm not thankful for challenging people in my life at all. <laughs> you know, I, the people that are negative or critical or, or, or just toxic. You know, I, in my personal life, I can choose to avoid that, and frankly, I do, because that type of environment just rots my soul. I just, it just really, it, it gets to me. I, I can't be around it, and so I choose to isolate my Self in my personal life, but I can't do that in my business life. I can't just choose to walk away from people that are here with me on this mission. But you know what? I, I'm not thankful for that. I'm not thankful for the feeling it gives me and the challenges, but I will forever be grateful for the fact that that causes me to pause to say, you know, I've got to dig deep to find compassion and patience and love for these people. It, I've got to dig really deep. It would be very easy for me if everybody around me was like me. I mean, if I'm, everybody's, you know, easy to get along with, for instance, it would be easy. But when I when I run into these people that tax my last nerve, that's when I have to dig deep to be a better woman. And so I seek those things, and I'm very grateful that they challenge me that way so that I can be all that God intends, you know, for me to be. I'm not thankful that, you know, around our Thanksgiving table, there are many loved ones that have already, you know, left this earth. I'm not thankful that my parents are gone, my sister's gone, a couple of my nephews are gone. I'm not thankful these people are dead, for heaven's sake. But I'm very, very grateful for the legacy in our lives. I'm very grateful that I can savor the memories. I'm very grateful that we can keep them alive in our family. And I'm very grateful that I know that our, our, our separation is a temporary thing. You know, and I don't dwell on the things I hear over and over. It just really breaks my heart. I don't celebrate the day somebody died. I celebrate their life. I don't want to dwell on the day that they left me. I, I don't I don't talk about the way they died, you know, the he hemorrhaged and all these horrible things. I don't want to think about those things. I want to think about the love and the beauty of my own life. I will forever be grateful for that stamp of my life. And again I know the rest of the story. So you know, I could go on and on with things in my life. And it would be easy just to skim the surface and just to mention those things that I'm thankful for, all those good things. But boy, oh boy, when I look at the adversity and I look at the trials and the tribulation and the pain that got me there, I'm thankful for that because I wouldn't have gotten there otherwise. And I know that in my heart. I believe that God always makes lemonade out of lemons. Nobody gets stuck with just lemons. It's when we just focus on the lemons that we think we got stuck with lemons. But God always makes lemonade out of it and everything. And so when those people approach me and they talk to me about how can you serve a God that, you know, does all these bad things, it's because we know that all things work together for good. And 99% of that battle is in how you look at the good and the not so good. So on that note, I want to wish you guys an amazing Thanksgiving. I, I pray that your day is just filled with love and laughter and lots of good food and fellowship and football in the background. But I also just want to challenge you to dig deep and look at the, the, the journey that God's brought you on. Look at the things that you've battled your way through. Don't just give thanks for the end result, but give thanks for the journey. So on that note, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Again, have a blessed Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.